take a second and think back over your education. Who was your favorite teacher? Mine was Miss Krista. She taught fourth grade. She taught me fractions and decimals, inspired my love of Nancy Drew, and sparked my passion for travel. Things weren't so great at home that year, although people outside my house didn't really know that. But Miss Krista, I don't know, she could see it in my eyes. And when she did, she'd check in with me more often, give me an extra hug on the way out the door. Her classroom was my safe haven. To me, Miss Crystal was enthusiastic, passionate, and cared about me, not just academically, but personally. Now, the fact is that we all have a favorite teacher. And every teacher, when they enter the field, wants to be somebody's favorite teacher. Now, there's no magic formula for becoming a great teacher. But after talking with lots of people about their favorite teachers, it looks like there are some common elements. Our favorite teachers were funny. They could make us laugh when we needed it the most. They were caring. They didn't just care about our academic achievement, they cared about us as a whole person. They're passionate. Teachers are up before the sun rises and often still working well after it sets. They're intelligent. Some of the smartest people I know. Masters of content areas, child development, conflict resolution, and group dynamics, just to name a few. They're thoughtful. You might not have known this, but your favorite teacher thought about you all the time because you were one of their kids and they do anything. And they were willing, willing to wake up every day and do the hard work of crafting a real, thoughtful, intelligent, kind, civic-minded human being in progress. And they were challenging. Our favorite teachers challenged us, and we wanted to succeed for them. In the moment, you may have had a moment or a series of moments when your favorite teacher did something or said something or didn't do or say something, that meant everything. That let you know in an instant they understood. Now to exhibit these characteristics, our favorite teachers were well. They weren't just trying to get through the day. They were thriving. They were in their element. And they changed our lives for the better. Now, That could be why I've spent my entire adult career researching how to help teachers be as effective as possible in their classrooms. And one of the best parts of this work is getting to sit down with teachers and talk about the day-to-day -day realities of teaching. So often these conversations center on, I don't know, teachers bragging about recent successes with their students, or griping about an administrator's new initiative. But recently, something's shifted. It's changed. All too often, teachers are talking to me about feeling overwhelmed, not sure how they're going to get through the next week, the next month, to the next school break, let alone the end of the year. And these aren't just first-year teachers or teachers in four schools. It's all kinds of teachers in all kinds of schools. After every one of these meetings, I couldn't help but think, why is this happening? And at first, I thought it had to do with the profession itself. Imagine having to get up every day and give a six-hour presentation to 15 to 30-plus individuals who are constantly evaluating you, and all of whom you have to get to the same standard of achievement by the end of the year even though some of them don't speak English as a first language. Some of them haven't eaten since lunch yesterday. Some of them have disabilities. Some of them didn't sleep well last night because of violence in their home or their community. And still others don't show up regularly because they're afraid of being bullied. It's not an easy gig. But those have kind of always been the realities of teaching. 
So why the change? And what am I supposed to do about teacher stress? Is it really my job to manage teacher stress? To be honest, at first, I didn't think so. I thought, their stress is their problem. But I was wrong. Teacher stress is my problem, and it's your problem too. And let me tell you why. Teaching has been rated the most stressful occupation. The proportion of teachers reporting great amounts of stress most days of the week has more than tripled in the past 30 years. Right now, stress is the number one reason that teachers leave the profession other than a retirement. So right now, stress is the primary cause of our teacher shortage nationwide. Now, not surprisingly, um, you know, teachers, they're stressed, but they also experience a much wider range of stressors than most of us. So yeah, they experience the daily hassles that we all do. They experience acute stressors in their personal and professional lives like we all do. But teachers also experience chronic stress related to their students. Nearly half of students in U.S. schools experience toxic stress as a result of trauma. And teachers, just by knowing about their students' trauma, can experience something called secondary traumatic stress. That is, just by knowing about the traumatic events happening in their students' lives, teachers can experience PTSD-like symptoms. So yeah, teachers are stressed and they experience a really significant range of stressors. Then I couldn't help but think there's lots of really stressful professions. What about pediatric oncologists, our first responders, air traffic controllers? Right? Is there something unique about the impact of teacher stress? And the answer is a resounding yes. Teacher stress has an impact on all of us through our economy, our schools, and our children. Teacher stress has essentially made our schools a revolving door. Nearly half of teachers leave the profession within the first five years. That has an economic impact of $7 billion a year. That's equivalent to the funding for the National Science Foundation or the entire federal prison system. It's three times the funding for the Food and Drug Administration, or the National Park Service. Stress has an impact on our teachers themselves. Chronically stressed teachers are at increased risk for physical and psychological health issues. Stressed teachers attend school less often, have poor relationships with their students, and are less effective in delivering instruction and managing student behavior. Now, emerging research is showing us that stress, not teacher knowledge or skill, is stopping them from being effective in their classrooms. That is, researchers have shown just by decreasing teacher stress and improving their well-being, they're more effective delivering instruction and interacting with their students. Now, unfortunately, teacher stress also has an impact on their students. Recent research is showing that teachers' stress actually impacts children's physiological makeup. Children sitting in the classrooms of stressed out teachers actually have a physiological reaction to their teacher's stress, an increase in the stress hormone cortisol. We also know that students in the classrooms of stressed out teachers are less able to regulate their emotions and are worse off academically. So I'm really worried that if we don't address the teacher stress crisis, we're going to have an entire generation of kids who do less well academically, behaviorally, emotionally, socially, and physically, all because their teachers can't be that teacher. Their teachers aren't well enough to be their favorite teacher. But it doesn't have to be this way. There's a lot of research going on right now, and we have lots of different ways of addressing teacher stress and improving well-being. Some examples include mentoring programs for early career teachers. They increase job satisfaction, they increase persistence in the field, 
and decrease teacher stress. Workplace wellness programs that are aligned with the needs of teachers decrease the physical and psychological health issues that teachers experience, decrease health care budgets for school districts, and increase teacher attendance and effectiveness. Social emotional learning programs. Now this one gets me every time. Just by teaching students social emotional competencies, we not only give students skills that they'll have for their entire life, but we actually decrease teacher stress and improve teacher-student relationships. And stress management techniques, because there will always be stress. So let's teach teachers effective ways to proactively and reactively address the stress that they experience, so that when they do have some stressors, they don't pile up one after another, leading to burnout and leaving the field. Now the other thing we know is that stressors, although many are similar across schools, some are going to be different from one school to another. So we can look to models from occupational health about how we go into a workplace. We identify the most salient issues in well-being, and we develop interventions to target those. That allows schools to support their workforce and also use their resources effectively and efficiently. So there's a lot to do in the world of teacher stress, but we can do it. By addressing teacher stress and promoting teacher well-being, we can probably get rid of the negative consequences on students, teachers, communities, and our economy. We can allow an entire generation of teachers to rediscover their passions, find their flow, and be somebody's favorite teacher. Thank you.